Yeah, so you've got the big three, right? We've got the base technology per the slide, which is RDNA 2. They're calling it 2.x. So it's kind of like a custom, <laughs> you know, a revised version of RDNA 2. Ray tracing comes from future RDNA. Machine learning, custom RDNA. Now, this is quite interesting, right? Because um, <laughs> one might expect that if there was a future RDNA uh, machine learning based feature that Sony felt comfortable with using, they would be using it instead. Um, Oliver, they've effectively rolled their own, right? That's correct. That's correct. Um, so here, uh, the, the earlier presentation on the ray tracing capabilities, I feel, was a little bit shorter, if just because it was borrowed AMD technology, but this is indeed quite custom Sony technology, it seems like, from Mark's presentation. So the main focus on PS5 Pro is machine learning upscaling here, basically a technology similar to DLSS2 or XCSS. And here, I suppose the task was adapting RDNA 2 to be more suitable for machine learning. Um, and the scope of the presentation, really what Mark said as well to me, was they really wanted to focus on speed and having their PSSR upscale process take as little time as possible. So they had a choice between an NPU solution and a GPU solution here, and they ended up going with a GPU solution. But the problem is when they actually started approaching this, this problem here, and adding extensions for machine learning and actually trying to get machine learning performance up to an acceptable level, is that you start running into limits when you have to start hitting system memory because you really need so much bandwidth for machine learning operations. You get like absurd levels of bandwidth boundedness <laughs> to the point where like fitting them onto on caches produces like a really absurd speed up. So anytime you're hitting system memory, you're getting a huge decrease. And indeed in the slides, what they're talking about was like their initial work on this was showing like a 3% utilization of the 300 tops on the PlayStation 5 Pro here. Um, so the goal was really to get the data on die working through all the layers of PSSR, which is a convolutional neural network, and then out and read back or written back into system memory at the end of that process as quickly as possible. Um, the problem they sketched out was that that would require a ton of memory, uh, which Mark said would, would be about 120 megabytes for a 4K image. Um, the answer is basically to take a smaller portion of that image through the chip at one time. Uh, but then you end up with some problems where the edges lack information around about surrounding tiles. They need to be thrown out. There's some edge data that needs to be discarded there. Um, in the end, the solution that they found that worked for them was to combine their vector registers in the WGPs, uh, giving them a total, I think, of 15 megabytes of memory and about 200 terabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Um, and so that was the solution they ended up going with. So it's, it's kind of like if you look at the solution that AMD adopted for ray tracing, it's sort of similar to that where it's not using a dedicated RT core hardware in there. They're still using the shaders. They're still using that generalized uh, functionality. It probably is fairly die efficient, pretty lightweight in terms of GPU die area, I have to imagine. And it's also probably fairly adaptable within AMD's existing architecture. Like I don't think they're making huge changes to RDNA here to facilitate this. And it does seem like they're able to achieve basically getting PSSR running quickly enough. It's not quite fully fused as they call it. They are still hitting system memory at various points using PSSR um, beyond just that initial read and, and, and write process. But it does sound like they're able to get it to a level of performance that they're comfortable with and happy with. And obviously it does work for PSSR in the shipping unit. So it does sound like they achieved their goals here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alex, you must wow. have been pouring over these details with much interest. These are great. I think this is really cool. Um, I really wish, I mean, it's not so consumer friendly, but I just, just hearing, looking over Oliver's notes and listening to the interview, this is a lot of stuff that I wish the original, like we had a road to PS5 Pro, that would have been really cool. Uh, because it's talking about essentially uh, the trials and tribulations of trying to make something performant on a GPU and within a hardware budget. And that's something that they uh, tried very well at. And they had, and the, there's the admission here that it's actually not as far as they would like to go. Um, uh, both one, the, the maturity of the network is a whole other question because, uh, as we've seen with some other launch games, like lower resolutions and there's some bugs at the moment. And I think, uh, even, you know, Mark talked to you about bugs that they incurred. Lots of bugs. Uh, that they occurred in yeah. the testing <laughs> process. Uh, cause, We've also seen bugs in the past with things like DLSS and XCSS. For example, DLSS had a really large, long time recurring bug of sitting still in a game and certain after like nine or 10 yeah. seconds, some objects would just start blurring crazily. And it lasted in the model for like a year, maybe longer. 
um, and that was there. Uh, so that this the, these things happen. Uh, so, but regardless of those type of issues, another thing that they're going to try and do over time here is to get the network fully fused. Now, this is something that I remember when we were talking with Tom Peterson. He emphasized that the first iteration of XCSS that they were going to put out was going to be a fully fused network, and that was evident definitely in the performance of XCSS on. Um, on hardware that had their XMX units, uh, where it was basically the same cost of um, DLSS. Now, on a 300 top style, like size GPU, DLSS is below one millisecond these days. I think it's like 0.7 or so on a, on a GPU with that many tensor ops, uh, I believe. And PSSR currently is around more, a little bit more than two potentially based upon the internal document leak as well as our super <laughs> rough measurement in god of war ragnarok uh, which is not the complete measurement by the way um and that implies that over time if they can work on the network more and get it more in budget so to speak games that run pssr could potentially run faster uh with later versions of the model library being called uh, which would be great because right now PSSR probably you'd want to limit it to games that are targeting 60 or 30, but in the future you'd really want it also for those games that target 120 FPS, right? Because right yeah. now it's one fourth of their one fourth of their millisecond budget, which is probably too much to spend on upscaling. Um, and yeah, uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, I would love to see greater iterations of PSSR over time, just like we saw with uh, on the NVIDIA side of things where. Also, DLSS's runtime went down from the initial versions, definitely in comparison to DLSS 1, for example, as well, too. Um, also, I think it, for future RDNA, I imagine this is the the route that is going to be the one that also AMD uses that Sony did to here, where there's going to be modifications to the main CUs to make it performant enough to run CNNs locally on the gpu and i think we have hints at that as well oliver yes well there we can talk with a little bit later but there's an <laughs> amd and sony technology collaboration to try to further uh, machine learning performance across their gpu architectures but one detail i thought was fun here and i know we were obsessing over this for a little bit or at least alex was thinking about this quite quite thoroughly here was that spectral name that playstation spectral super <laughs> yeah and it turns out from mark that spectral means nothing <laughs> nothing at all uh he said that's basically their branding for machine learning technologies and libraries that will go into their products so like tempest audio engine you know playstation spectral right. something something right presumably that would be the way they go forward with this is spectral is basically their big machine learning brand here doesn't mean anything in the context of pssr what a shame yeah yeah it's a bit of a I shame mean, there's also no shakespearean callback there is there spectral I, no. I wasn't tempest and like <laughs> oh, all these other things that's interesting weren't they all references to shakespeare please? well maybe someone um, at sony sony marketing has asked in their head but and alex apparently <laughs> But, yeah. So the weird, yeah, the weird um, thing is, of course, that PlayStation is PS and Super Resolution is SR. So you didn't need the Spectral to begin with. You could you could still have had yeah. PSSR. <laughs> they it's whatever. Um, but the funny thing is, talking about the the tiling scheme that was described earlier, uh, where tiles would then have to maybe share information across their boundaries, which messed up the whole ability to stay on system cache. Uh, Oliver, that is interestingly enough, somewhat referenced in the weird um patent for uh do you remember the weird machine learning the, the, the patches we, upscaling patent yeah the upscaling patches where different patches would be done with they broke up the screen into tiles very small tiles where certain ones would be done with uh, machine learning capabilities on the gpu while other tiles that were deemed less worthy so to speak of a more complex upscaling process would use just standard spatial upscalers uh, but the idea of breaking up the screen into tiles was actually weirdly enough already in that patent from all the way a while back that had Mark Cerny's name on it. So they were thinking about it for a while. Interesting. I think, um, you know, looking at what uh, everything that's been disclosed here, um, <laughs> Sony is basically looking to produce an enhanced console for today, but with an eye to the technologies of tomorrow. 
And, you know, it's kind of like highlighted by the fact that, you know, rasterization can only go so far. That's borne out in the PlayStation 5 professional design, right? Uh, the GPU hasn't been doubled this time in the way that it was with the PS4 Pro, certainly in terms of compute performance. Uh, instead, it's kind of like um, a kind of mixture of new techniques, right? Uh, exciting ones, machine learning uh, based features. At the moment, it's just um, upscaling, right? But um, this kind of hardware can be used for all manner of different uh, features in theory. Ray tracing, obviously, you know, <laughs> the, the future is ray tracing. It's, it's kind of like um, undeniable at, at this point. So, you know, it seems to me that they've had to kind of like um, produce these new technologies, but somehow work them into a design that is backwards compatible with the existing PlayStation 5. And I think it's really fascinating to see what they've come up with here, because, you know, when NVIDIA rolls out a new graphics card or, or AMD even, it's effectively a clean slate. It's a complete new architecture. Um, they could do whatever they want. If you look at the uh, transition from um, Pascal to Turing, you know, the intro introduction of those RT cores and the tensor cores, um, that is an option, I guess, just wasn't available to Sony here if they wanted to produce a machine that was 100% uh, compatible with the existing PlayStation 5. But I think the direction of travel in terms of where future technology is heading, um, in terms of consoles, um, it's all starting here. And of course, Switch mm -hmm. 2, of course, <laughs> which has a very, very <laughs> similar feature set. So yeah, absolutely fascinating to see all of this detail laid out for us.